Do you find yourself asking the existential question, what distance do I zero my rifle at? Maybe you've got an old rifle, an old optic, and you don't remember what you zeroed it at. Or maybe you've got a new one and you're doing some research and you want to make sure you do it the right way. Well, in this video, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you the information that you need to make your own decision about what yardage to zero your rifle at. I'm Delta 9 and this is Johnny Tactical. Just a couple things to keep in mind. When I say rifle, we're talking about the M4 AR-15, okay? We're not talking about any other kinds of rifles. Number two is we're not gonna go into the weeds. What I mean when I say get into the weeds, we're not gonna talk about barrel length, barrel twist, the grain of your bullet or the weight of your bullet, windage, none of those things. We're just gonna keep it super simple because as Abraham Lincoln said, keep it simple, stupid. I saw it on the internet, so it must be true. All right, so bullets don't travel in a straight line. You may think they do or imagine that they would, but they actually don't. You see in a straight line, so your line of sight is in a straight line, but bullets actually travel in an arc. So I'm also gonna talk about things called holdover and offset. And just to make sure that we're on the same page, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of what that is. So here's a rifle, your line of sight, your, your optic or whatever you got here. The distance from here, to here, center of your board where the bullet comes out. So for just the sake of what we're talking about today, and again, to keep it simple, it's about two and a half inches. So this is your offset right here. So if I was at zero yards, I would be aiming here, but I would actually be hitting here approximately. So you're gonna have a two and a half inch offset. And then your holdover is when you're shooting at various distances, there's gonna be a variation because remember your line of sight is straight and the bullet comes out in an arc. All right, so I'm a visual learner, maybe you are too, but so it, oftentimes it's easier to actually see a picture of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna show you a chart. Um, not that charts are all that fun or, or exciting or anything like that, but at least it will better illustrate probably to help you understand what the differences are at the distance that you zero your rifle at. So we're gonna talk about the 25 yard zero, the 50 yard zero, and 100 yard zero. All right, here's a chart to illustrate what I'm talking about. So as you look at the chart, on the, the left hand side, up and down, you've got inches. So that's your height above and below your line of sight. The 0, 0.0 there near the bottom, that's your line of sight. And then from right to left, the zero up to 250, and it would actually continue out to about 300 plus yards. Those are the different distances in range. So let's first look at the 25 yard zero. The 25 yard zero is illustrated by that red line. So as you can see, as it climbs from the bottom corner, where it crosses the 0.0, .0 where it crosses that dotted line, that's point of aim, point of impact, which means we set up a target 25 yards away from us, and we fired our rifle and adjusted our sights until our rounds hit where we were aiming at. Point of aim, point of impact. That's where the arc of the bullet crosses your line of sight. And that will continue on and it won't cross your line of sight again until about 300 yards or so. So that means if you zero your rifle at 25 yards, you can have point of aim, point of impact at both 25 and 300 yards. But look at the holdover. Look how it climbs up to almost 10 inches uh, when it's at about 200 yards. So that means if you shot at something 200 yards away, you're gonna be off by 10 inches. All right, next we're gonna look at the 50 yard zero. That's illustrated by the green line. So that means we set up our target at 50 yards, we started our rifle in, so where it crosses that horizontal line, that's the point of aim, point of impact. And then check out the arc on this one. So point of aim, point of impact is gonna be at 50 yards, and again, at about 200 yards. And look at the deviation though in your holdover. So you're only at about an inch and a half high at 125 yards. And then from zero, you're at about two and a half inches because that's your offset. Remember, the distance between your sights and your bore. And then last, we're gonna look at the 100 yard zero. 100 yard zero is where your line of sight and the arc of the bullet um, intersect. And if you look at the arc on this one, 
you're accurate at 100 yards and then pretty much that's about it. So that means closer than 100 yards, you're gonna be uh, low and beyond 100 yards, you're also gonna be low. So when you look at the three different zeros, the 25 yard zero, the 50 yard zero, and the 100 yard zero overlaid on top of each other, you can see that the 50 yard zero is actually like the best of both worlds. It's the most versatile because you're gonna be only plus or minus approximately two and a half inches from zero up to 250 yards. Whereas the 25, you can see the huge deviation in that, and then the 100 is, is more limited. So for me, I choose the 50 yard zero. But now that you have the information, you get to decide what you're gonna zero your rifle at. And next what we'll talk about is how to zero your rifle. Zeroing your rifle is actually pretty simple. Once you've picked your distance, next thing you wanna do is stabilize your rifle. It's a bipod or shooting on a bench, just something to give you um, the most consistent hits. Shoot groups of three, and once you shot your first group of three, just go down, mark your target, and mark your target, like use a Sharpie, and draw a little triangle on your target. That's gonna give you like your best overview of the grouping. Just go back to your rifle, make the adjustments that you need to, and those adjustments all depend on your particular optic or the iron sights on your rifle. So make the adjustments per your manufacturer's recommendations, and shoot it again and just keep repeating that process until your groupings are where you want them. So they're point of aim, point of impact. All right, so one thing you might be concerned about is, let's say you wanna zero your rifle at 50 yards because you've looked at the chart and you're like, hey, that's actually the most versatile um, of the zeros, but you only have access to a 25 yard range. Well, there are targets out there that you can use at 25 yards to zero your rifle at 50. I'm gonna have free targets to do that, available on my website. So just jump over there to johnnytactical.org and you can go to the shop, go to my downloads, and then you can find it there and download that target for free. I hope you found that video helpful. I hope it answered your questions and gave you the information that you need to make your own decision about what distance to zero your rifle at. I appreciate your viewing. I appreciate if you would share it, like it, and follow if you're not following. I depend on you to spread the word and grow my audience. And if you could follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Also, jump over to my store and you know what, check out, you get some sweet Johnny Tactical t-shirts. They're high quality. Most of them are made in America. They're printed locally. And uh, we've got hats, shirts, stickers, and patches over there for you. And uh, jump over there. And if you sign up for my mailing list, you get 20% off your first order. It's not too bad. Johnny Tactical exists to make law enforcement better from within and safer from without while helping you take your work seriously, but not yourself. I'm Delta 9, and this is Johnny Tactical. The sights and the center line of the bore. Whereas, um, what did I just say? Did I say offset? You said bore. I, I know. So. Like the pig? Oh, no. Don't do anything weird or wonky, just like, <coughs> <Sorry>. bless you. <laughs> Blooper.